Yeah, exactly. I called I call this one. <laughs> this amateur radio roundtable is brought to you in part by ICOM America. All right, quiet on the set. <laughs> All right, uh, hey, today is Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Boy, Tuesday, December 13th. Welcome to Amateur Radio Roundtable here on W5KUB. Oh, boy, we had a lot of trouble the past week. You would not believe it. Didn't even know if we are going to get the uh, webcast back up this week. Uh, we've had internet outages. We've had hard drive crashes. We've run on a generator for eight hours. We got software programs that aren't working. We got all kinds of problems, but between that and all the other things we had to do, uh, I think that uh, we got a working system tonight. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Like to uh, just say hello to everyone listening on shortwave. We've changed uh, back to 5130 kilohertz on WBCQ at 5130 kilohertz out of uh, Monticello, Maine. We'll say hello to lord robert up there who's managing the the board up there and putting our audio in robert keep the audio going there thanks a lot robert uh let's see what else oh hey i want to remind everybody we have a segment with we have a segment with uh riley hollinsworth he's retired from the fcc and we need questions so if you got fcc type questions send them to ask riley at w5kub.com or you can just send them to me, and I'll get them to Raleigh. But Raleigh will answer your questions. Uh, hopefully, we'll have him on in a couple weeks when we get enough questions uh, uh, for him to uh, make an appearance on here. And if you'll put your phone number in there, Raleigh usually will call you back on the telephone personally and talk to you. So send your questions in to ask Raleigh at W5KUB. Now, uh, I'd like to uh, also uh, ask everyone that's uh, joining us on the video tonight on the web, uh, please join our Facebook group and follow us on Twitter. But click on that Facebook link up at the top of the page there in the menu. And uh, we've got about uh, 4,800, 4,850 members now of our group. We're going to hit 5,000 members real soon. And um, that's going to be uh, that's going to be kind of a milestone for us. Uh, in February, we will have hit uh, two solid years uh, for the show. So help us there. Uh, we've got some uh, uh, really uh, uh, cool guest on tonight, and we're, Katie's going to be with us in a minute, and we're going to have uh, some really uh, fun and cool things going on here. And uh, I also just want to show you something. Uh, the second segment of the show, I'm going to talk to you about how you can use this, how you can use this for your ham with your ham radio. And uh, that's going to play a vital part of the segment that I do uh, here in just a little while. Uh, but first, let's go out to Katie out in Wyoming. Uh, Katie, how are you doing tonight? Let me see if I can get Katie in here. There we go. There we go, Katie, you're on. How you doing? Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, everybody in the chat room. I am doing well tonight. How is everything out there with you? Hey, we're uh, we're doing good here. Uh, you guys got any snow out there? Yeah, we keep getting more every day. It seems like a little bit here and there, and the temperatures have been uh, well below zero uh, quite a bit. So it's uh, winter is here, that's for sure. Well, it's getting really, really cold here. I'm having to dress up. The temperature is down almost to 40 right now. Ooh, 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, if, if turn 40 here everybody would be in shorts and flip -flops. oh wow <laughs> yeah yeah i know what you mean I, I used okay but um this year I'm not... so temperatures i flashing a light here uh, let's see what's happening okay. well it's back I, on now. I, I, maybe maybe you talking, Katie, uh, made the internet go down. I don't know what happened. Uh, my internet. But we're green again, so I tell you what, we're going to continue. 
and if something uh, keeps happening what we'll do we'll try to uh, go down to a little bit lower speed on here but uh, anyway you, everything's looking good right now right. so and we might get some feedback from the uh, chat room guys how's the video coming through are we doing okay I saw a little problem okay so uh, let's jump right into it Katie what do you uh, got going tonight well I am absolutely thrilled tonight to have my friend Hope KM4 IPF on tonight to talk about her great adventures in California along with her dad James uh, WX4 TV they are down in Florida but they were off in California for a week James has a really cool job that he travels quite a bit for and I'm not sure if this particular gig was part of the um, we do epic.tv um, for a movie he was working on filming but um, of course while they were out there being the good hams that they are they had a great opportunity to uh, get on the air and Hope did some QRP operating and uh, the really cool part which I'm looking forward to her telling us all about is being a guest on the Last Man Standing set Kilo Alpha 6 Lima Mike Sierra so with that oh I see you guys are on the show so welcome to you guys how are you tonight? Hey Katie hey Tom yeah we're good hey. here and you said if if you were 40, you'd be in like flip flops and all. Well, we would be freezing to death here in 40. But right now, it's it's better than summer because it's super hot. We're sitting here in shirts and sandals and steady. Are sure. you really? Oh, you yeah. lucky kid. <laughs> here, don't get much of winter. So you just oh, wow. got home from your California trip. And it's now about nine o'clock at night on the East Coast. But what time? What time did you get home today? Well, this morning we got to the um, Orlando airport at about one. Made it home probably about two thirty to three. Oh and, my goodness! Have yeah. you had any sleep? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing? Eating a lot of candy to stay awake all day? Uh, not really. We just. Went outside and played because it was a really nice day here. That's good. I bet you were happy to see your sisters and brother and mom when you got home, right? Yeah. Cool. Well, what I'm going to do is turn on my little PowerPoint here in just a second. I'm going to share my screen, and I'm not sure if Tom will be able to have both the screen and you guys on it, but what I wanted to do for everybody was to show off some pictures of some of your activities, and you guys can tell us what was going on out there and I'll kind of lead you into it and I just named it myself I called it hope and her grand California adventures but stand by one quick second let me start sharing the screen here oops I gotta get on the page and there we go so once I hear from Tom that we're yeah, good looking I looking good yeah you got it yeah okay yes. Do you see the, um... <laughs> yeah, we see it. Nice you see it now? Okay. All right, I'm trying to, I can't see when I have the uh, screen showing, so. Yeah, you So, show. here we are. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Do, do, do. All right, looks like everything's live. Okay, so we've got Hope and her Grand California Adventures, and was that a, was that a little gentry you were doing there for our buddy Paul, K9PG? Yeah. That's excellent. And where were you when that photo was taken? Well, since Daddy was working for the, um, well, what he was doing up in California that I got to come with, um, he was filming for um, a story about, like, the workers, like the original Imagineers and all for Disney. And so that was at Bob Gurr's house he invented the monorail and stuff and while daddy was filming I went outside since it was up on the mountain and I spent my time up there on the radio and so daddy got to take a picture of me on the mountaintop when I had the radio next to me yep that's another one and I believe oh. that was, uh, I actually got you on that um, operation when you were out in the backyard. I had a chance to talk to you there. Yeah, you were my first contact up at Bob Gurr's backyard. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I was the first one. Well, it's a good thing I got you when we did since I kind of, uh, I moved the beam right to where you were at. And uh, and I heard you. I'm like, oh, I'm going to call now just in case. And, and you came back with your usual, oh, hi, Katie. 
That always makes my day when I hear that. <laughs> yeah, we know who it is, but I've got to legally say the call sign, and then I'm like, oh, hi, how you doing? Yeah. I think that's great because, you know, sometimes people get caught up with, um, you know, it's fine to be formal and we have rules we should follow when we're operating, but it's always nice when you can talk to someone that you know and you can have that familiarity with them. And so what radio are you using there in that um, photo? Well, we're using the KX3. Um, it's just the Elecraft KX3 QRP radio and it's very portable. Of course, you work a QRP with it, with, and we have a QRP antenna that we were using that we put up in a tree across it, across his backyard, and it worked pretty well on the mountaintop, but of course, bands were dead, so we didn't get very many. Right. Yeah, the bands weren't the greatest, but they obviously got out. How many contacts did you make that afternoon? Do you remember? I don't know. I think about 20. <coughs> usual, That's... probably about 20. Yeah, that's pretty good. Were they um, just in the States, or did you get any DX while you were out there? I think it was just in the States. Um, yeah, we're looking at... The she actually got 10 that day, and Katie is the first one Yep. on the log. Yeah. woo All right. I'll get it high for you like you want it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay, so let me see here. Now, I'm not, I might have had this one out of order, but this was obviously in the evening. It looks like it was even a little chilly to have your sleeves down. Where were you at there? It almost looks like you're sitting at a, like the poolside lounge or something somewhere. Well, yeah, we were. That was in California, which it was pretty cold there. We were, like, freezing there because, you know, it's on the West Coast. Well, it it's was, got different weather. That was in Universal City. Oh, yeah, yeah. At, at the Hilton. And, and we went out to the pool and strung it through the... No, you were using your alpha loop. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. We were using our alpha loop antenna. And okay. It up, and we tried to make contacts. I don't think we made any contacts that night, but we were in a valley. Okay. Hey, but that's okay. You gave it a try. So how many antennas did you guys bring with you? Well, I don't know how many they were, but there was a bag of multi-use ones. <laughs> We had a off-center fed dipole that we brought, and wasn't that the long wire that you could use as a long wire? Yeah. You could put it up with balloons like we did at one point um, and make a vertical. You could also get, like, plungers and, uh, and like, on a window up at the top floor that we were at. Well, one of the top floors. You okay. could make a loop by just wrapping it around several times. And we also had that loop, which was the alpha loop. So we had kind of a lot of antennas, and we got to try them all. That's awesome. Um, did you have any problems? Did you carry that stuff on, or was it all packed and checked luggage so you didn't have to worry about it? Yeah, I, I don't know where Daddy packed it. <coughs> we carried it on, and um, TSA in Orlando understands me. And TSA in um, in Los Angeles and Orange County, anytime there's anything that is electronic, they just go nuts. Um, yeah. So uh, we carried, I think we carried it all on. Um, we were hoping to, to use the Alpha Loop. Um, Steve uh, from Alpha Antennas sent the kids that, and um, we got to um, play uh, play with it before the hurricane. And we had a lot of success with it. And I think what happened possibly is the antenna may have taken a whack during transit. Oh. Uh, so we've got to, I've got to take it apart and we'll look at the capacitor, uh, the variable capacitor in there and see. Uh, we couldn't get it to work on this trip. Um, oh, okay. Um, we tried uh, two or three times. Yeah, but it was fun trying. And then the um, the wire antennas. Um, I know you know Emmett from Radio Waves. He of is a real good friend of ours, and um, that's that's a picture of what. That's a picture of. I think that might be. Uh, that's up on top. That's oh, yeah, up by that, Lake Arrowhead. Yeah, we were up there, and the little puppy is my toy cattle, and we went up there, and we took lots of pictures. And the smog from down at the valley, surrounded by the mountains, 
it makes the tall mountains, it pops up and makes it really look really pr pretty because you're above all the smog and stuff. Mm hmm Actually, Kate. Yeah, I thought that was a really neat picture because you can really see so very far behind you. That was the day, and we shared it on Facebook, we were going to do some, Hope was going to do some um, QRP work from up there because it was way up. It was like 6,000 feet in the air and good view to the east. East, And we strung the off-center fed dipole in the air, turned on the radio, and the batteries were dead. And unfortunately, uh -huh. what had happened was we had put the batteries on charge inside the KX-3 um, the night before in the vehicle, and the, the charger got unplugged. So what happened was, is when the KX3 is charging, I guess it still is doing a power draw, and it was sitting there telling us all, all night long that you have no, you don't have enough power, um, for to charge it. So that didn't work. But um, I should have sent you the video. I've got it on my phone. I, we could possibly try to share it that way. But we were up there at an overlook, and there was a rock that looked like um, it was the peak of a mountain. I'll let yeah. Hope talk about what she did there. She posted a video on, I think on Facebook or YouTube. I, I think we have a video, don't we? No, it's, this is a different one where okay. she talked about getting ready to do some QRP. You remember what you did? Yeah, I can explain it if we're not able to share it. Well, it was on the top of a mountain and there was this kind of big rock. It was probably like four or five feet tall, probably only about four. Um, and I was climbing up on it, almost like it was a mountain, facing the mountain where there was the drop. And so Daddy took that video as I was climbing up from out of sight to sight. And I climbed up, and I was like, hi, I'm Cam for IPF, and we're trying to find a place to put this antenna that we have up in the trees or something up on the mountain. And I was like, I man, this, this place is steep. And then I pretended to fall. Oh. <laughs> because I was like, oh, very good friend. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you do like to ham it up for, Hope you know, for photos or other things. Work. Speaking of hamming it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you remember where that was? Yeah, that was at another place. Um... I don't know what the name of the film is. His name is Garner Holt. Um, the, the film that we're working on, uh, I'm, I'm doing the cinematography for it. Uh, we're interviewing a lot of the original Imagineers that worked directly with Walt Disney. And we're going from the 1964 World's Fair to the creation of Epcot. And this guy actually didn't work with Walt Disney, but he worked with um, or learned under Bob Gurr. This guy's name is Garner Holt. And he does most of the audio animatronic uh, stuff for um, all the theme parks and Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, he had so much stuff in his his studio. It right, was cool. Right. And that's pretty much the only thing back there in that workshop that we were allowed to take a picture of. Um, really? But we wow. can't tell you what we saw. I mean, it's just incredible stuff that they're working on. And um, oh, what were those? We saw big candy bars. We can talk um, about those. Oh, yeah. We saw these giant, like, Hershey bars. Yeah, Hershey bars. And they had like the little arms and feet coming out of them and then little eyes in the bar. And <laughs> like, down. And they were so cute. And we were like, oh, yummy. <laughs> I think I had to get my lips looking yeah. at it. Just yeah, they're, they're, they're actually, I think, going to Hershey Park in um, Pennsylvania. So There was also a Hershey's kiss that we looked at. A little oh, Hershey's neat. Bag. And those were things you weren't allowed to take photos of, right? Well, the Hershey's Kiss we were, but I, I didn't send that one to you. But, yeah, there's a lot of stuff off to the left in that picture that's just really cool. And, um, you know, part of being able to see it, we can't tell anybody about it because it's, it's uh, stuff that it's not necessary it's proprietary, but his clients don't want it shared yet. Right. But it was a really cool trip. In fact, you got to sit at a piano with somebody. Do you remember... Yeah, the first interview we did on that trip, um, it was Richard Sherman, and he wrote all the music for, like, The Parent Trap. Well, I only know some. He did Mary Poppins, Parent Trap, stuff like that. 
I haven't seen Mary Poppins, but Mommy recorded it because we they saw it at home while we were gone. But he sang um, and played on the piano when I was sitting next to him. Um, oh. It we was the, the same. They played the, the love song yeah, from the Parent Trap, the parent which trap. we watched on the plane last night. The original yeah. 1961 Parent Trap was on the Delta flight from and so we watched Los Angeles. It. Perfect timing. Wow. It was done like a minute before we needed to get off. So yeah, he, right. he sang um, Walt Disney's favorite song. He sang was um, "Feed the Birds" from Oh from, Mary uh, Poppins. Poppins, and then he sang for the finale uh, for the camera. He, he sang. Had, he said. Super Califragilisticexpialidocious. Katie would be an understatement. Um, he anointed the piano. <laughs> Uh, with lots of spit as he's saying it. That's a that's what an amazing experience. Holy cow, that's that's really cool stuff. Was, hey, so speaking of cool, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, James. But the studio where we interviewed him had mm -hmm. some really cool albums, like Pink Floyd had recorded in there, and oh, tons of, of really big name bands and and gold records and platinum records were on the wall, and. Right. Uh, you know, it was so cool to just sit in there, and he took time to share his candy bar with her, and, you know, it was cool. But what happened here? This was right after. Yes, that was, like, exactly after, after like, later that day, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right after in and out Burger. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> and that was at the Last Man Standing set. Um, yeah. I think Katie's is right over the one that we cut Here, wait a minute. Here, wait a minute. minute. I think something. Sh I think you took a picture of something. Oh, look at that! <laughs> yeah, but there it is. oh yeah, there it is. There I, it, right there's next. mom and there's Lane. Yeah. There's all of there's the Allen household and Breen household in the corner here. And then on his um... oh Kay is there. Yep, and, and Kay Car and Carol. Yeah. Oh, there's Chip and Janet down here. And then the one with the big rock mountain. It. Um, to Piggy's right ear is Katie's. That's yep. here. And Look, there's a Chris. That. There's Christopher just above mine, KD8YVJ. And my card was on there for a while, but it's been a couple That's years now. I'm sure it's rotated off by <laughs> now. I think yours was. Oh, there. I don't know. I bet it's still there, Tom. I, I so see it. I see it on the. Uh, yeah, I see it on some of the re reruns every now and then. Yeah. So, yeah. So here we. So I'm gonna go back to the before picture. So Dad got a picture of y'all happy and excited, ready to operate. And um, so you were operating. That's a. Is that a, a ICOM 7800 there, or what is that uh, thing? I think it's a 7700. Okay. Uh, but let's give a disclaimer here. This yeah. little girl got into. We landed um, at 1 a.m. Eastern time. We flew a direct flight, flew a late flight from, we left at like 7.15 Eastern, landed, and then we drove to the hotel, and we got to the hotel at about 3 a.m. Eastern time, and we got into our upgraded room, because I'm a diamond with, with Hilton, and what was in the room, do you remember? Well, it smelled like a dead body or something. Yeah, there was like we a dead body in the room. Because we were <laughs> and this guy... When we called, the people at the front desk or whatever daddy called, they are like, yeah, right. Some guy went up there, he's like, well, I got a cold, so I might not smell it. He walked in the room, and daddy came Oh, there. my. <laughs> so <laughs> she had actually, she got to bed um, at about 4 in the morning Eastern. Uh, we had an early call time with Richard Sherman. Um, we shot that all day, gulped down the uh, In-N-Out burger, literally on the side of the road. Um right. And then made it over to the studio. So by then, it has been a really long day for her. And but if the bands were good and we were fully rested, then <laughs> even for you, Katie, since the bands were horrible when you were doing it, you said, then we both could have probably got like 300. Oh, yeah, probably. Well, when I was there, I was, you know, I was there with Dwayne and Chip K7JA and, K and Janet yes, KL7MF. So we were, you know, I wanted to make sure, I didn't want to be a total Mike hog and you know, take up the whole time, I, although I could have, but, you know, wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to operate, and it was pretty exciting to, to sit there and, and play radio um, from that spot. 
Um, you know, because we watch Last Man Standing every week. We, regardless of the ham radio piece of it, we just love the show. And so being on the set and, and getting to take a tour of the set and then sitting down and playing radio right there, it was it was really exciting for me. And, um, you know, I sure had a pretty good pileup going as well. But listening to you, it was just, you know, it was really impressive, I have to say, you know, you know, it's hard for somebody who's been a ham for a long time to run a pile up, even when you're used to it under the best of conditions. But I mean, you know, we all know you're you're ten, right? Or are you yeah. nine still? Yeah, you're ten years old. You've been a ham for a couple of years, and you sat down and created this massive pile up and and managed it and ran it. And I had no idea you already had such a long day. Um, before you even got to the station, and how many how many contacts did you end up making? Would you say? I'm looking at that right now. I think I made like 130, <coughs> maybe 50. Holy cow! So basically, about one a minute. 139. 139. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Well, I know I was really happy to get in the pile up, and I got there early because I just I got there right after I heard you finish talking to your sister and your mom, <laughs> and I threw my call out, and you you heard the YL, and you said the YL, and I said WY7YL, and you said oh hi Katie. Yeah, we're like uh, the YL ending in Lima, and we're like oh hi Katie. We didn't get yeah. good Lima, and we knew it was late, so. Right. <laughs> that was fun. And I heard you, I heard a lot of other, you know, friends and people that are in the chat room today that um, got to make a contact with you. So, you know, after, you know, you did that for a good couple of hours. I know you went over to 40 meters as well after a period of time, right? It was about half on uh, 20 and half on 40 or what did you do? Not bad like that. We lost oh, business on 20, at least that we could hear. There might have been others calling. So yep. we made a small pile up and worked it all that we could. Then, of course, everyone waits for the pile up to go away, and as you're leaving, you have a huge pile up. Right. Which, back then, we had to get off the set because um, we're not allowed to tell anything about the movie and what it's about. But, you know, in live audiences or the, like movies, you know how it is with the laughing. It's a live audience, and we got to go into the laughing section, as I call it. Right. You Laugh and laugh. Oh yeah. So you got to sit and actually watch them tape the show. Did you get to did you guys get to meet any of the stars of the show? Well, um, Tim Allen was going to come over but he saw that I was working a pile up and he left because he's like, I better not <laughs> interrupt that. Oh <laughs> You should wish too bad we didn't get him on the air. That would have been fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We'll go back sometime probably. Oh, I'm sure. And um, so during the show, did John come and get you? John Amadeo is the NN6JA, who's the produce, executive producer, or one of the executive producers of the show. Did did I see somewhere you posted you got to go down on the um, behind the cameras and watch some of the filming, too? Yeah, he thought that would be easier for me to see. Um, yeah. I got to go down there, and it was easier to see. It was fun to see it up in the laughing section, down on the ground behind the cameras. So we had a fun time there. That's awesome. Let me awesome. Tell you something about John. His hospitality was absolutely incredible. But yeah. um, being in that business, I noticed the, the um, cameras that he's shooting the show with and in talking to him about it, he is he's a groundbreaker in the television mm -hmm. industry. He was uh, the first person to shoot a sitcom on HD mm -hmm. and using uh, cameras that, that, that we use for shooting films. Um, to do a sitcom, which is unheard of, wow. and the, the the cinematic quality of the show, when you, when you look at it, it's like wow, they're really doing a good. He he's he's a groundbreaker. I, I was really impressed with what they were doing out there, just from looking at it from the industry standpoint. Right, that's neat. It is really a great experience. So once you got that under your belt, then you headed down and. Um, with the plans to activate for the National Parks on the Air at the Joshua Tree National Park, correct? Yes, that was on Sunday, the day before we left, because we had that at day free. So we went there, and we went and operated. There was a lot of cool rocks. Since Grace loves rocks, we wish she could have been there. We wish the whole family could have come and helped operate. 
and there was tons of rock piles, and you could climb them. And at first, we found some rock piles at the front, thinking, oh, these are cool. We climbed them and operated. Got about 20 contacts, I think, at that activation time. And then we shipped down. Yeah, that's one of the rocks that we climbed. Then as we went, we noticed bigger and bigger rocks and piles and all. That's and actually like, this the is rock awesome. you did the first activation from. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is oh, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Like I said, I might have had some of those out of order. I'm just waiting to make sure that the show catches up with what we're doing here and what we're talking about. So then the next one, this one I really liked. I thought this was kind of cool. So did you operate from way up there? Um, no, that's no, the, that's the one that I. No, that's the one that. That's the really um, Yeah, there was a. Um, it said an exhibit, and they said you could find like rock climbers coming with like the harnesses and gear. And we stopped by there to see what it was, and we found the rock climbers climbing up. Like, Katie, we saw on your um, QSL card, the big, like, straight-up cliff rock. It saw one rock. Right. Yeah, it was like that on one end, but on the other end, which you see that, it's easier to climb because it's separate rocks, almost like stairs. Right. And so we went up there. Well, Daddy stayed back to take pictures and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I right, was climbing right. and, and exploring. The rocks had like tunnels through them, and um, it's almost like you got lost down there. But eventually, you find your way out and down of the mountain of rocks we call them. And so it was really fun. We didn't operate there. I couldn't go on the big straight up one because they didn't have the harness. So we went right. to the other side. We're like, oh, cool. This is what we already have yep. climbed on the other rocks. <laughs> That's another operation. This, let me tell about this. This is the yeah. second operation, and the picture doesn't do it justice. We climbed for probably two or three hundred feet from where the truck was parked, and this is up on a little plateau on top of all these rocks. Mm. So we're pretty far up. Um, and probably what I should have done was climb back down and taken a picture of her up there, but it might be. Legs are still hurting from that. It's been more than 48 hours. Yeah, I yep. bet. <laughs> I think that's the first, the first one, yeah. Okay, and so it's not... You've got the background and then the big rocks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the second one that we found some even bigger rocks that somehow we found a way up. <laughs> So were you able to um, get out and, so overall when you were at Joshua, so how many locations within the National Park did you sit down and operate from? Like, there was those first ones that were climbing up the rocks. Yep. Then we wanted to go to another place. It was a mountain called Keys View, they called it. Um, that's not the mountain, that's the first activation, but... At night, at night after the sunset, because you can kind of see the reflection of the sunset in that second picture. Uh, okay. Not, not quite. Um, but so you can see it, and I think it's the one before that. You Let's see. Well, you did three. Yeah, there was three. But at the third one, it was at night up on the key view, because it was, like, over a mile up. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was freezing there, so we didn't do any outside activations. So, well, we did try to. We made, like, one or two um, mm -hmm. outside, but we were so cold. So we just brought it in, and we didn't make more than, like, one or two from outside um, before we... Talk about what yeah. you see in the... You can see your wire going off into the yep, sky. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. Yeah, you can see the wire. It's kind of going up like that. And you can see it because, as I said, what we did, you can make a vertical with the antennas. And so we got two balloons. Yeah, I thought I put that picture in. I'm sorry, I must have missed that. I thought I had it. There was a photo I had from a distance with the balloon in there. But uh, we'll see if I can't yeah, we'll, we'll find see, we'll that. We'll see that on the video in a minute, too. Yeah, that's right. It's on the video, which we'll do in just a minute. 35 KUB's Facebook page to shamelessly plug that page for you, Tom. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll post them on there uh, when we get done that show the activation. This rock is about 20 feet up in the air, and um, the wind was blowing all day at about 15 to 20 knots. Oh. So 
the balloons wanted to go sideways. So this little intrepid climbing girl here um, <laughs> realized that, I like to climb. I found that, hey, those rocks look like a great kind of stairway on rocks. And so I just climbed, and we found that it was um, good to climb with. And so we brought up the staff. But if That's you have awesome. a long antenna and it's being held up by balloons and you're at the ground and they're blowing the antenna sideways, you have an antenna laying on the ground. James, uh, I, I went to a field day one time and we we took helium and balloons and very light wire and we were going to put up like a thousand foot vertical and we were on top of a mountain. And, <laughs> and guess what? It went out horizontal over the lake. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's what happened here. I think she made... I made about like 20, 25 HF contacts with 5 watts. On that first activation rock. Wow. I know I uh, went down to the shack to hear you for one of them, but I just I wasn't able to pull you out at 5 watts. But I was trying to keep up with the progress because your dad was posting on the National Parks on the Air Facebook page. And I know it's getting awfully close to the 1 million QSOs for the year, or unless they've actually hit it, but... I think, sure. I think a lot of people were excited yeah. to have the park activated and very excited to have you activating it. So it was kind of a double double whammy for everybody. <laughs> so I know there was one other cool thing you got to do while you're out there, and that was to see the Pacific Ocean for the first time, right? Yeah, that next picture, that is, I think, a heron. Wasn't it the, that, that the heron? Okay. Yeah. We, we tried to touch it and catch it, but... That one, like another picture, I don't know if Daddy showed you, um, that one wasn't injured, so that one just kept running away on there and eventually flew. Yeah, it's that one. It looked injured. Yep. It might have been just very still on an egg or something. Yeah. But you can't see it with the lighting, but we named it Green Beak because for some reason its beak was green. Oh, that's I cute. Think, but... Um, yeah, That's pretty story. good because you know I didn't I didn't see the Pacific Ocean or yeah the Pacific Ocean for the first time until um, <coughs> back when I worked for the ARRL and I went to um, Pacificon um, one of the ham fests up in the San Francisco area and went over to um, see the Golden Gate Bridge and all of downtown San Francisco so that was oh about nine oh let's see ten eleven years ago so and I'm you know. I'm, I'm something years old, so I'm not going to tell you. But that's pretty neat that you got to see that at your age and um, all these really neat experiences. And I, I really, I'm kind of finishing off the slideshows with a picture of you and Daddy because I thought this was really nice. And I'm giving you the title of best dad ever, James, because I don't know how many kids have the chance to do all the cool things you've been able to do. And of course, earlier this year, you did the Youth D Expedition with Faith Hannah, and we still got to get her on to talk about that too, but really neat stuff. And so um, with that, I thought it'd be, if I could turn it back to you, Tom, we have a few videos that um, James has from some of the operations while she was at Joshua Tree, and I thought it'd be great people can actually see her in action. Well, before we do that, let's let's what? give mommy credit. In oh, yeah. Yeah, um, let me get you back Michelle, on Michelle, before she married me, a long, <coughs> long time ago, um, she got her license and surprised me. Back in the days when VE sessions were new and mm -hmm. the questions weren't, they weren't, you know, put in a book. She she studied on her own. And she is the reason that all of the kids got their ham tickets. It wasn't, it wasn't me. Um, I had kind of fallen out of the hobby after a hurricane destroyed our house or mm -hmm. virtually destroyed our house and um, buying, you know, fixing the house and replacing TV cameras was more important. Right. Um, and Hope wouldn't have been able to come and Faith Hannah wouldn't have been able to go if mommy wasn't here uh, facilitating them doing their homeschool and supporting right. me for over, you know, nearly 24 years now, being gone some years, most of the year um, oh. and doing a job that I love and um, it's taken me all over the place and she has kept the fort at home and she's got to be the best mommy ever because I agree. <laughs> you know, she doesn't get the limelight but without her there wouldn't be any limelight to have so okay. yeah get michelle in here to wave to everybody at least so we all know who mom is for anybody who doesn't already but i agree and i have to say you know everybody who knows all about your kids there she is hi mom <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, 
You guys are really um, such a fine example of a whole ham family of all of the different things you do. And all the kids have various levels of interest. And, you know, for a long time, of course, growing up in traditional education and not knowing much about homeschooling, um, I really had no idea of the things that could be accomplished. But after um, I know some families here locally that do homeschooling and then meeting your family, it just blows my mind what can be done and when the family really is comes together the way you guys have and um, really a great inspiration for everybody. And I have to say to you, James and Michelle, thank you for sharing your children with all of us. And, you know, we were all kind of joking on um, the Facebook page when Hope was running Last Man Standing. We were all, I said, I'm a proud surrogate auntie. And then everybody else was popping in about being proud surrogate uncles too. And, you know, I think, Myself and a lot of us out here feel like, you know, your kids are our kids in a way, too. And it's a really generous way to share your family. And i just like to say thank you for that. All right. Well, so, uh, yeah, let's roll the roll videos. We've got a little bit more yeah. here. And uh, remember, uh, we can hear you if you talk. Uh, but that also means, uh, James or Katie, if you need to talk over the video, uh, you can. Okay. So let me uh, let me grab a video here. If I can do this, let's see. I can think I can do this. Uh, let's see. I got we got to switch a couple uh, scenes here. There we go. We'll get it. National parks on the air. Secure national parks on the air. This is Kilo Mike Four India Papa Fox Trot. Kilo Mike Four India Papa Fox Trot. Joshua Tree <coughs> National Park. November Papa 32, Cure Z. I see the balloons. Alpha Echo 5, Kilo Sierra. Kilo Sierra. Kilo Sierra. Kilo Sierra. Echo Alpha 5, Kilo Sierra, you're 5'9. Um, Joshua Tree National Park, November Papa 32. Open. 2021. Are you playing the video, Tom? Uh, yes. Okay. QSL, thank you for the contest in 73. What's the time? 2019. At 73, Kilo Mike 4, India Papa Fox Turtle, Joshua Tree National Park, QRZ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. National Parks on the air, thank you, National Parks on the air, thank you, National Parks on the air. This is Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Trot. Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Trot, QRZ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, National Parks on the air, thank you, National Parks on the air, thank you, National Parks on the air. This is Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Trot. Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Truck. QR dead. <laughs> CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ National Parks on the air. CQ National Parks on the air. CQ National Parks on the air. This is Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Truck. Kilo Mike 4, India, Papa Fox Truck. QR dead. Secure National Parks on the air. Secure National Parks on the air. Secure National Parks on the air. This is Kilo Mike Four India Papa Fox Trot. Kilo Mike Four India Papa Fox Trot. Cure dead. All right. All right. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get the other. First, I got to stop this one. James, are are you guys seeing it come back to you? No, we just have Skype. I don't. Um, our internet, for some reason, we're paying for three hundred megabits. Oh, we're yeah. getting four okay. um, tonight. Um, so I, I don't have the show pulled up. Oh, oh, well, okay. I thought it'd be coming back to you on Skype. But anyway, here's the uh, here's a uh, uh, hope at uh, Joshua Tree National Park. It's a short one. So did you, play the, you just played the first one, I guess. No, I um, shot down on the ground. No, I played. The, I played the second one first. This is the this is the uh, nineteen second one with the balloons and her on top of the rock. And here we go. Okay.
Welcome. All right, and then we got uh, the third one. Let me let me make sure they're all off here. And here's uh, this is uh, uh, looks like Fatana and Hope testing the smashed Kyocera solar panel. Here we go. I hope the ice cream don't get. Oh, you pulled that one. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. That's annoying. I wonder, I wonder if wonder. it's gonna work. Hey, Julio. Oh, hi. I'm Faith Hanna. And I'm Hope, Cam for IPF, and welcome to hamradio.world. As you see, our Kilo Sarah 140 watt solar panel that we've talked about before has gotten smashed. Well, the story was a friend was carrying it back home from the Georgia Stone Mountain Ham Fest, and he had to slam on brakes. And so a bunch of Motorola battery chargers, sla when he slammed on <coughs> brakes, went flying on it, and it smashed it. So we're wondering if it's going to work. So we have this, our Genesun charge controller hooked up to this amp, volt, and watt meter, which is hooked up to the solar panel. And right now it, it has 20.4 volts and using three watts for this. So we're going to plug it into the battery we have for our KX3 and see if it's doing anything. So now it has 18, pretty much 18 volts and 28 watts and I'm not sure if you can see this in the video but this light right here is flashing green um, so that means it's charging so it still works but not as good as it used to so now our 140 watt panel is about um about 18 20 watts but at least it still works thank you for watching this is cam for ipf and ae for fh all right <laughs> And we're back to, uh, let's see, we're back, <coughs> we're back to you guys down in Florida, and, and also, right, let me, uh, we're entertaining there we go. There we go. <laughs> well, hey, uh, yeah, boy, I tell you, uh, you girls, Hope and Faitana and even, uh, Zachariah and all you kids that are in the family, you guys do great things there, and uh, you really uh, surprise us with all the things you can do. You're, you're showing the the, uh, the grown-ups and the adults off. You, you can probably teach us a lot of things. Well, Katie, well, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope we're teaching that ham radio is supposed to be fun. You know, it, it is uh, first and foremost a service. Um, that needs to be there in times when it needs to be there, but if you can't have fun doing it, there's no ch there's no reason to get out there, um, no reason to get a license, no reason to get a rig if you're not going to have fun doing it. And and you know how Bill Cosby used to say years ago, if you're not careful, you might learn something. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, it's uh it's it's been a great hobby. I've been in it 52, 53 years now, and there's always something to do. Hey, I, thanks, uh, Hope and uh, family. For, for being with us tonight. Everybody there's a Faith Hannah's here. Yeah. There she is. And there's little Grace. Yeah. There's the whole gang. Hi, everybody. Everybody's building an Arduino project somewhere. No. All right. There's mom. And so there's I, James I, and all of his girls. And I see mom back there. So there's the whole ham family right there, all together. Zechariah's not here. Oh. Um, well, yeah, so you're we, right. We actually yeah. have a, a family club call now. Oh. Um, that you might have heard Grace, if you go to the Last Man Standing, uh, Mike Baxter, was it KZRXTT page on Facebook, uh, John Amadeo posted the video of Hope working the pilot. And you can hear Grace and you can hear Mommy working Hope as KM4YVH. And uh, there will that's be, temporary. yeah, that's temporary. There will be a, a new call sign, uh, I believe on Friday. We'll wait until we see which one the FCC lets them get. Um, but it'll be cool. Awesome. So. All right. Very good. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna have to run here. We're we're running running a little late. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, Katie, uh, wow, great great segment, Katie. And 
we're going to have to have these guys and gals back again pretty soon, aren't we? I think so. Sounds well, good. Well, thanks again. Hey, All right. Merry <laughs> Christmas to everyone there. And uh, you guys down in Florida have a very Merry Christmas. And and, and we'll talk to you later. 73. 73. 73. All right. All I got to do is find the right buttons on here again. Okay. There we go. Uh, there we go, Katie. I got you back. Okay. That was great, Katie. Uh, very, very good Thanks. segment, man. It, those girls, that was fun. Can, those girls can really, uh, oh, they they really do a lot of things, can't they? They're really impressive, I have to say, and you know, it's just uh, it really gives you a great inspiration for the future of ham radio with all these young folks like like the Leah kids, and then you know Marty, Chicken with Fries, and Christopher, and. Uh, and Skyler, I mean, some of the kids' names we've seen a lot of this past year, and it's really exciting. I think the more we can do to support and embrace them, um, the better off we all are. So thank you for the time to share that with everybody tonight, and thanks for all the comments in the chat room tonight, everybody. And, um, you know, you can find Hope and the whole family on QRZ, of course, and they're very active on Facebook, especially on the National Parks on the Air page. So don't ever hesitate to send messages, especially if you want to try to get a QSO with them, because they're on the air pretty much a, an awful lot. So with that, I want to pass it back to you so we can get going on your Bid X projects there. Yeah, okay, uh, Katie, thanks, and uh, goodbye, and 73 and all that. Uh, you can stay on here if you all want right. to. You can stay on here if you want to and yell at us or whatever you want to do. I, <laughs> I'm not going to cut you off. So, Your your audio is hot. Right. Your audio is hot. Uh, I think she left us. Okay, Katie's gone. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just one second here. Tis the season. The holidays are here. Surprise your favorite ham this season with the gift that is on her center list. The holidays are just around the corner, and ICOM has an array of radios to fill your stockings or place under the tree. Just arrived for the holidays, the IDA 51A Plus 2 provides new models for extended D-Star coverage. Available in five colors, the IDA 51A Plus 2 is a perfect stocking stuffer. It has terminal and access mode, send and receive text messages and pictures, DV fast data mode, and an easy FM repeater setting. Ideal for the contest are on the go. Try out the IC7300. It's a high performance, innovative ATF transceiver with a compact design. The real fun starts here. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and an SD memory card slot. Push performance to the pinnacle with the IC7600. Following in the footsteps of ICOM's flagship radio, the IC7600 has an intuitive operation in the latest DSP technologies. It has a digital IF filter, dual DSP, a large 5.8 inch ultra wide TFT display, and high resolution real time spectrum scope. Visit www.iconamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. All right, and we're back. And uh, time now to talk about the... Uh, well, first, let me uh, just uh, cover just a couple of other things real quick. Uh, for our listeners out on shortwave, uh, again, we went to 5130 tonight. Uh, we moved to 5130 kilohertz tonight. It's winter time. The propagation is probably a lot better on 5130. So that's where we are. Maybe uh, we've got some shortwave listeners out there. If you're listening on shortwave, you can join us on the web at w5kub.com. w5kub.com. And if you're out there listening, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Send me a signal report and where you are. You can send that to Tom at w5kub is in bravo.com tom at w5kub.com send us an email um you know uh, the next segment we're going to be talking about uh the bitx 40 transceiver and i know a lot of you've got really excited about it over the last uh, few weeks we've showed shown it here and uh, I've got um, 
um, a, a friend that's also uh, uh, been following us uh, here for many years, uh, Ron, over in the Netherlands, PA3 FAT. And Ron uh, has been helping. Uh, he, he ordered a, a BIX, uh, BITX40. Uh, he didn't have it yet, but I was working on the VFO, the, the Arduino VFO, and uh, uh, Ron jumped in to help. And he he, uh, he is a coder and he's a programmer, and he has really really uh, done a great job with that. I I can't hardly do it, but as many of you know, nearly all the code for Arduino is is shared. If somebody develops it, it's shared with everybody. So. You know, when you guys get ready, and if you like this VFO, and you, you know, I'm sure the software will be available that you can load into your your VFO, and it will look just like the one I'm going to show you tonight. So, you know, I, I told you tonight uh, uh, the show was going to be uh, uh, around this, and uh, this is a, a fire extinguisher sign that I bought at Home Depot. I think it was a couple bucks, but it's going to be a very important part of this project. And uh, I'll show you in just a couple minutes uh, uh, why it's going to be important. So uh, let me see if I can uh, uh, jump right into the, the BITX40 and show you kind of what I've been doing. Uh, but, but also let me say I haven't had much time to work on it this week. Uh, as I mentioned, we had a lot of issues that we were working through with the webcast. And uh, we still have a lot of issues uh, that we're, we're going to be dealing with this week, but uh, we were able to get the show on tonight. And uh, uh, over the next few weeks, I will be working on this BITX uh, 40, and we will be doing improvements and, and, and modifications to it. The nice thing about this radio is this radio is a single sideband, 40-meter, 5-watt transceiver. My first contact that I made with this little board, just like it is there with just a couple wires hooked to it, was South Africa, ZS6CCY, ZS6CCY, South Africa, 9,000 miles away, and I was on a 40-meter a inverted V. So that's the main radio you order. You, you can get it. It's already assembled. It's already put together. Very, very well built. $45.00. And it comes already built, and that also includes shipping from India. It takes about three weeks to get it. So you got to put it in your own box. You got to think about, you know, what are you going to do with this thing? So, you know, has anybody, I guess anybody out there, seen one of these boxes before? Um, you know, this is a this is an interesting box. There are probably a lot of people have these laying around or in the junk box. I don't throw anything away, and Kathy always tells me I need to clean out and throw stuff away. But it it becomes useful. So I've got several of these in the attic. I grabbed this and brought it down, and uh, I thought, you know what? That's a, a pretty nice looking little box. You know, it's about ten inches wide, and it's about uh, uh, I think about seven inches deep, and uh, you know it's got a pretty good height, uh, a little over two inches in height. So I thought, why don't I build the Bix, the BITX40 transceiver in this box? So I kind of laid some parts out on top of it, and you can see um, that I would have plenty of room here. Really, I mean, I've got a lot of room left in that box. Uh, on the right side is the BITX40 transceiver, and over on the left side is the Arduino, uh, uh, the Arduino and the VFO that we're going to use. And I'm also going to put a little antenna tuner, a little QRP antenna tuner in there, and um, uh, a lot of things. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of things with it. So the first thing you do, you gotta you gotta take out the insides of that uh, direct TV and don't throw it away. Look, you see that board? It's got a lot of parts on it, a lot of good parts. And I never, I, I always, I don't, I almost never buy parts because you can get high quality parts off these boards that you throw away. Heat it up with the soldering gun, pull them out, and uh, I've got. You know, thousands and thousands of parts like this. So when I when I go to build something, you just look around, you pick the part out you want, and 
you use it. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have to go to Radio Shack, which probably won't have it anyway. All right, so so once the case is empty, this is the back side. You see, it's got a lot of holes in it. You know that that's pretty ugly. And uh, you know it's so it's just a, a mess back here. So what I did was I I cut the back out. I got a little nibbling tool and I just cut the cut the back out that had all those holes in it. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. <clears throat> So there's the case with the board removed. So you can see it's a nice metal case, not plastic, but it's a metal case. Got plenty of room in it. So I'm thinking, okay, I really need one of these. I got to have this. So I went to went to Home Depot and picked up a, I was looking for a piece of aluminum. And this is what I ran across at Lowe's. And I thought, okay, I'm going to use that on this radio. So I took it out in my shop and I marked the size I needed for a front panel. And I actually took a razor knife, uh, a razor knife and scored it about 20 times as hard as I could. And it cut right through that aluminum and I was able to break that aluminum out. And it gave me a little piece right there that I needed. And back back to the case so what are we going to use that piece for okay you notice uh, i i uh, have that chassis there with the hole cut out in it so what i'm going to do is take that little piece uh, of aluminum i bought the fire extinguisher sign and put it in the box like this over that hole that i cut out now it was white on the back side and it had the sign on the front side but i'll probably paint that uh uh to be the same color as the the box and what i'll do i'll lay it out i'll have the digital readout in the center we'll have the tuning control we'll have the volume control uh we'll have mic jacks uh and maybe even uh, uh uh the qrp antenna tuner might come out to the front through through the front there so back to uh ron over the netherlands he he was instrumental in taking some code and all the, again all this code is pretty much shared and available out there there's so much you can do but he took the code and he modified the code and wrote code and new lines to make this thing do all the things that we wanted to do you know he would take a piece of code from here and a piece of code from there and put it in and then troubleshoot the bugs and he'd compile the code and we would load it in arduino now Besides the Arduino, now the Arduino, let me tell you what this costs you if you want to build a VFD.